Chuck, good to see you. Seeing you. Welcome aboard. Yeah. I'm glad you were able to join this. us for an edition of Discover UC. So how long have you been here in uh, Charleston? I've been here about five months. Good. And uh, I never had been to Charleston previous to that. Mm -hmm. I drove here when I heard about the opportunity, drove around the stadium, uh, liked what I saw, mm -hmm. told the owner, Andy Shea, that uh, uh, since I like what I saw, I would, you know, want to keep the conversation going. And two weeks later, we had an agreement that I'd be coming to uh, the beautiful city of Charleston. Well, we're delighted to have you here in uh, Charleston, and certainly everybody's thrilled that the uh, power's ba back up and running. So tell us a little bit about uh, your background. You spent most of your career in sports and entertainment, is that right? I've spent all my career in minor league baseball. Wow. I, uh, I graduated from... Uh, little school in Miami, Florida called Biscayne College. They since changed the name to St. Thomas University. I graduated in 19, December of 1982. I took an internship with the Oklahoma City 89ers, a triple A team for the Texas Rangers, two weeks later in January, and I've been doing it for 39 years. I imagine um, having spent your career in minor league baseball, you've kind of seen uh, lots of uh, interesting things. So uh, tell us some, tell me some fun anecdotes uh, about your travels. What are some, well, some like <laughs> promotions or legendary in minor league yeah, baseball? Yeah. So what are some that have been like, you know, really effective or just crazy, well, but you know, maybe yeah. didn't move the needle? Well, you know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of successful promotions and, mm -hmm. you know, they're the ones that aren't as fun to talk about because they're successful. Right. Everybody mm -hmm. knows a fireworks show works, mm -hmm. uh, a bobblehead works, a t-shirt works. Mm -hmm. It's the ones where you, you take a little bit of, of risk, like, uh, uh, you know, a few years back in Reading, I had a guy named Captain Dynamite uh, that I had in Idaho Falls, and he blows himself up with real sticks of dynamite at second base after the game. Enough dynamite, it shakes the building. And, um, and he was deaf from all the explosions through his 30-year mm -hmm. career. Uh, so the only way to get a hold of him, you had a, the number was for his next door neighbor, and if she blinked her front porch lights and he happened to be looking, he knew he had a phone call. So it took me several times before he noticed the lights blinking. He finally got on, came over to her place, got on the phone. I said, I said, Captain, I haven't heard from you. I'm getting nervous. The promotion's a week from now. He said, well, Chuck, I, 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 I can't make it, unfortunately. Uh, my doctor said one more explosion could do me in, and uh, I really shouldn't take that chance. So I immediately went to plan B, and I had to get somebody just as crazy. It was a doubleheader, and I wanted to have somebody do something different between games of the doubleheader to entertain. Someone suggested Tiny Tim. Oh, Tim through the window, by the window, that is where I'll be, come Tim with me and I, I I tracked tiny Tim down through the Howard Stern show who because he was a regular guest on the Howard Stern show I was able to convince him to come long story short he came before he went out I met him I says I want you to go for 15 minutes that's all we have between it games of the double header he went out, what he didn't tell me is that when he performs, he closes his eyes and he just goes from one song to another. And he had about a half hour medley going. <laughs> so I had an assistant out on the field and, and 15 minutes later, I'm giving my assistant the cut, the cut sign and he's trying to relay the cut sign to, <laughs> to Tiny Tim who has his eyes closed. And he was on a roll. Pennsylvania, beer barrel, polka, he had it all going. So finally my guy had to go up and tap on his shoulder and say, it's time for tiptoe through the tulips. The pitchers were warmed up, they were ready to go. Benny, long story short, there was probably 5,000 people. He brought the house down, standing ovation. And then he went to his autograph booth to sign for the second game. And he was drinking 32 ounces of uh, soda. And I finally went up to him after about an hour, and I says, Tiny, if you need a break to go to the bathroom, mm -hmm. uh, we can give you a break and just hold the line until you get back. And he looked at me and said, no problem, Mr. Chuck. I'm wearing Depends. <laughs> <laughs>
He had everything covered. Oh, he had, he had, he had it all covered. <laughs> he was a real, real true professional. <laughs> You've been here for about five months, doing a great job uh, in this crazy pandemic year, but I'm sure you're already thinking forward, all right, now that I have a season under my belt and again in the lay of land of Charleston, what can we do to take the power to the next level? So uh, what's what's brewing? Well, well, the biggest thing that's brewing is that uh, we are going to make an announcement that we have heard and listened to our surveys that we had online about changing the name of the team. Mm -hmm. and. <clears throat> we will announce then whether we are going to change the name or not. Mm -hmm. But to answer your question, uh, a team name change would be a, a lot of momentum going to the off season. Uh, you know, any decision you make, you know, you're, you're always so 50% of the people are going to be happy, 50% of the people are going to be unhappy. That's probably a decision that's not make, worth making. But if mm -hmm. you get to that point where you think you're more like 75% you're happy, 25% unhappy, you're probably going to make the change at that point. Sure. So I consult with the people in the office and you know get their opinions on it, and mm -hmm. then we make our decisions. Great. Well, with the season extending a lot longer than it um, has traditionally, uh, we actually have students back on campus, uh, so hopefully we'll have an opportunity to do a uh, UC night at Power Park, which we can never do before because the season started and ended after our students were off campus. We're going to do it. We're, one way or the other, we're going to get it done. We're Excellent. looking at uh, the end of September. Our last regular season game is October 3rd, and hopefully we're fortunate to, uh, to make the playoffs after we get back from our six-game season-ending regular season road trip. It would be great to come back and make the playoffs. So. Um, we still have a lot of work to do, um, but it's been it's it's fun and it's a uh, it's rewarding when it all when it all comes together, and I can feel that it's all coming together. Well, that's terrific. Well, Chuck, I wish you the best of luck the rest of the season, yeah. all right. and I uh, look forward to spending some time down right, here at Marty. the ballpark. Thanks for the ride. Great to see you. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, Marty. Take care.